To start the project, you'll need Jump. Now, if you don't have Jump already installed on your computer, you can go to the Stat201 YouTube site, and there are videos for downloading and installing Jump on a Mac or a PC. Now, you're on the YouTube channel right now, I assume, so go to the videos right under this and um, find these videos right here. With that in mind, if you already have Jump on your computer, you need to download the data file first. With Jump installed on your computer, the data file will automatically associate it. As you see down here in the corner, the data file associated, and when you click on the data file, it will open up in your computer. If you don't have the data file opening, um, meet with someone in StatLab, uh, talk to your friends or talk to your professor, and see if you can get Jump to work or email someone. You can always email me. Now we need to go to the instructions for the project. And the instructions really take you through it step by step by step, making sure everything is very, very clear. One thing we can do to help ourselves out is at the start, go to the jump window right here. And you'll need to go to File, and you'll need to go to Preferences. We can go down to Window Specific, and we need to change Show, let's put right here, Auto Hide Menu and Toolbars, Never. Yours will probably say based on window size, but that can often cause problems and students won't see the little menu bar at the top. So put this to never and click apply, and there you go. That was under file, preferences, window specific, and then click never under auto hide menus and toolbars. So now this little menu at the top will always be there. With this in mind, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we need to do is take a random subset. And according to the project, we need it to be 500 plus the last two digits of our UTID. That means go ahead and take a look at your UTID. If your UTID says last two digits are 63, you'd be 563. In this case, it's 91, so your last two digits here would be 91. Let's go ahead and use those last two digits. We're going to go to Tables, Subset. And I'm going to click Random Sample Size and put in 591. I hit OK, and we get our random sample of 591. Now with this in mind right here, you need to show evidence of this with the next requirement. It says you will need to take a screenshot. We go down here to requirement number two. When you create your random, screen, when you create your random sample, take a screenshot. Now to do this, I suggest using Command Shift 4 on a Mac, which will let you take a little portion of the screen, or Snipping Tool on a PC. I have Snipping Tool down here at the bottom. You can't see it, but you can always go to the menu and click Snipping Tool. Now my screen is frozen, and I can go right here and take a capture of the screen. So Snipping Tool can be accessed by clicking your menu bar down here and typing in Snipping Tool and you'll find Snipping Tool. It is great. Um, you can always go New Snip and take a new picture. So this just shows that I took 591 rows. This is my random subset. With that in mind, we can go to the next part right here. From this random sample, create a histogram of hours slept, or hours someone sleeps on a school night. Very important to this project, I will not be doing exactly what you're doing. I want to make that clear. I'll probably say it throughout multiple questions. I wouldn't want people to take screenshots of what I do online and then pass it off as their project. So if you were to do some of this stuff and pass it off as your project, that would be a bad idea. As in, you will do hours of sleep and hours people sleep a night, but I will do something slightly different. I'm just going to take a different variable right here and do the same analysis. I'm going to go to Analyze Distribution. Let's go ahead and take, hmm, let's go ahead and take age of first strength. So I'm analyzing a distribution just like you'll be doing. So you'll put hours of sleep over here. And we see a quite a weird distribution, and I'll explain why. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit stack under the red arrow. Red arrows always have the options. So I hit stack, and it looks like a really skewed right distribution. But with this in mind, we have the people reported 999 because they don't drink. Let's take a look at the instructions right here. It says that 
we need to put it in horizontal layout and include a count access. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's add an account access right here by going to History M Options, Count Access. Now these people shouldn't be included, I would say. Um, you can take one screenshot before and after outliers. Um, you could have someone who reports a zero, so I'm taking the screenshot right here. There we go. That's before outliers are removed, and you would need to remove the person who's a zero if they're in your data set but I'm going to remove these outliers. And here's the process for removing outliers. I'm going to select them like this. If you notice, you can see in the background there, it's selecting those observations. It even says 67 are selected. Now, if you did the little part before about file preferences, you will have rows up here. You could always click it over here, but it's much easier within this window. Rows, whoops, exclude, rows, hide. And if you notice, those little icons appeared on those numbers. So I removed them from the analysis and I hid them from the analysis. Exclude means that they no longer are computational in the analysis. Hidden means they don't visually appear. So you could have something computational that isn't appearing and vice versa. But now we're going to do a quick trick. We're going to click here and go to script and go to redo analysis. By doing this, I save myself time and it can be done multiple times throughout the assignment. I have now redone the same analysis and we see that the scale on the bottom is a little bit crazy. We have someone, whoops, we have someone reporting 999 or 99. I'm actually going to do the same process with them. You won't have to do it this much, but they shouldn't be included in this analysis. If you notice, I still have everyone else excluded and hidden who I wanted out. And let's go to script, redo analysis, it just does the same thing. And now I can move this bar over here and I can even change, there we go, put it like that, and the bins even change for me. There we go, nice, neat histogram. Except for this person who said they started drinking at age zero. So this isn't perfect, but it gives us an idea of what's going on here. At this point, after I've removed those outliers, I would once again go to Snipping Tool and create a new snip of this right here. There we go, another nice and new picture of that. And let's go to the next requirement. It says to remove the person with zero. Uh, we did a removal, so you should know how to remove points and then redo your analysis. Just go to script, redo analysis. In one complete sentence, describe the shape of your final histogram. So let's look at that final histogram. Here it is. One complete sentence. For my histogram, I would say that it is unimodal, skewed left, uh, with a really weird big outlier by someone reporting they drink zero. Now one thing I want to point out that maybe I failed at doing was I still had points selected and this is kind of a pet peeve of mine. Um, if you notice these points are kind of dim so if you click there you can unselect those points and I would actually if I was doing this project I would want to take a picture of the histogram like this. Sorry for that, it's kind of a pet peeve of mine, but now you see those points show up and they're not grayed out because we don't have other things selected. But this is a unimodal left skew um, histogram. Yeah, We see here outliers down here, people who started drinking very young. We see here the median and the mean are very close to each other. We'll get more into that later. And we see the IQR goes from about 15 to 18, a range of three for the IQR, which is the interquartile range. Going back to here, should use the mean and standard deviation or the median and IQR. Now it's very important with your distribution that you choose the right one. Since I've called my distribution skewed to the left, since I've described it as that, I need to make sure I use the median and IQR. Median and IQR are impervious to skew. Skew will raise the standard deviation and skew will also drag down the mean in this instance because it's skewed left. They might say, well, the mean and median are very close, and yes, that's true. But still, we want to use the median and IQR, and those are paired together. We could call something strange if it's more than 1.5 IQRs below Q1 or 1.5 IQRs above Q3. And it looks like no one is strangely high. Well, some people haven't drank yet, and they could be older. Long kind of idea of what's going on there. With that in mind, we have chosen either the median and the IQR or the, or the mean and standard deviation. You must pick two, one of those, as in one pair, mean and standard deviation or median and IQR. 
Choose the median and IQR if you called it skewed. Choose the mean and standard deviation if you say it's normally distributed. Down to the final one, we need to report the appropriate values and write a sensor to interpreting each of these numbers. Now, the median is the middle 50th percentile. It's the 50th percentile, I should say. That means from our distribution right here, 50% of people started drinking at or below 16 years of age, and 50% of people started drinking at or above 16 years of age. I want to make that clear. I gave that context. I, didn't, I did not just say the median is 16. The median would be 50% of people started drinking at or below 16, and 50% of people started drinking at or above 16. The IQR is the middle 50%. That's what it is, but to give it context, we need to say the middle 50% of people in this distribution started drinking between the ages of 15 to 18 years of age. That is what we are talking about here. The mean would be, on average, people from this distribution start drinking at age 15.98. The standard deviation would be, we see variation around the mean age of drinking about 2.26 years of age in terms of standard deviation. Standard deviation usually goes into our context of the 68, 95, 99.7 rule, and that's why we need normality, because we need the distribution to look normal to use the standard deviation to properly describe a distribution. So we're almost done with this one. There's a 0.1, but it's very, very important to the rest of the project. It makes it very clear here. For this, we need to go in, and let's go to our data set right here, and go to rows and go to clear row states. And you'll notice all this 68 stuff down here just vanished. Everything is back to zeros. Very, very important. Make sure you do that. Good luck.